In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how you calculate the payback period. Now, this is a pretty common calculation, and you would think the Excel people would have just gone ahead and created a, a fairly simple uh, tool to do it, but they haven't. I don't know what their problem is, but it's a mechanical calculation. It's The payback period is simply the average length of time it takes to recover your initial investment. All right, so if we look at project A, the initial investment is 12,243. The total inflows is 14,000. Project B, it's 11,000 and change, 15,000. So you get paid back, but when do you get paid back? Okay, so the idea of the payback period is to turn that into years. Okay, the fastest way to do that is to do cumulative cash flows. So do that out to the side. Cumulative cash flows, that number plus the number before it. All right, so times zero, your cumulative cash flow is negative 12,243. After a year, what you have done is gotten back 3,377 of your initial 12,243. So now you're still out of pocket 88,66. After the second year, you get another 22,53. So you're still out of pocket 66,13, 44,01, 18,24. So sometime in the fifth year, you get paid back. It's somewhere between the end of year four when you still had 18, 24 outstanding and the end of year five when you've been paid back. So somewhere during the course of the year, you got paid back and it'd be about four years plus 1824 divided by 4233. If you think it's going to, you, if you earn the cash flow over the year on an even basis, which you don't, but that's the only assumption that, we're, that really works, then it'll be about 1824 divided by 4233. That's the portion of the year. And so that would, your payback period would be 4.43 years or about 4.4, 4.43. Uh, adding a lot of precision to this doesn't add a whole lot of accuracy, but in any event, that's how you do it. Go to the sex, ne next set of numbers. You can see here that sometime between the end of year three and the end of year four, you actually got all your money back. So that would be, first of all, if you just copy this one over, it'll be wrong. Okay, so because you have three years plus the absolute value of the 1633 that you still are out of pocket at the end of year three divided by the total cash flows during year four. Okay, 3.64 years. And with project three, this one is also the same thing. It's it, You get paid back sometime between the end of year three or end of year four and end of year five. With this one, I could actually just copy this because it's taken the absolute value. It's going to take four years plus 1031 divided by 4229, which I can eyeball and see that's about a quarter of a year. But if I hit the the edit button that's showing you 1031 is what you're still out of pocket if you get 4229 throughout the year that's about a quarter of a year now let me make up a one last example project d cash flow and i just make up 10,000 and then 2686 3686, 7686, just start counting it up. And again, all I have to do to solve for this for project D 
is look to see what the cumulative cash flows are. And here they occur between the end of year two and the end of year three. Okay, so sometime between the end of year two, when I'm still out of pocket, and the end of year three, I get that last 3686 divided by the 7686 I get during the year. All right, now you got to use the absolute value here because otherwise you'll get a negative number. All right, We're right around two and a half years. You can sort of eyeball that because if you're just looking at it, 3,600 divided by 7,600, that's around half, right? So if you get a number that's radically different than two and about a half, then you know you might have done it wrong. Anyway, that's payback. I mean, it's... It's not a complicated calculation. It's actually kind of idiotic calculation because, well, I'll give you one last example because you're already what you watch this much. Watch just a little more about Project E. Project E, 10,000, and you don't get squat diddly until the last year. When you get two and a half million dollars. All right, so doing our math on this project, all right, your cumulative payback is still, you don't get paid back until during year five. So that'd be four years plus the absolute value of 10,000 over the two and a half million dollars. Now, the payback rule says you'd have to show a lot of decimal places here for that to register. The payback decision rule is, well, I have to get paid back within three years or two years or some arbitrary number, uh, or I'm not going to do it. And here's a good example. If you said, well, if I don't get paid back within three years or even technically within four years, because this is over four years, well, I'm not going to do it, except that this is the one that had the highest return. That's why we use some of the time value of money stuff and make these other decisions. Now, that being said, the other thing that you ought to keep in mind is that the company's got to be able to survive the five years to get the, the two and a half million dollars. And if you're terribly illiquid, well, that bodes, that does not bode well. So the payback actually does give you an idea of liquidity and liquidity is very important in business, so especially small business. So, you know, this is a deal that, yeah, if you invest $10,000, but it'll take five years to get back by two and a half million, but my kids starve to death in the meantime. Well, it's not such a good project.